Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today is the last video of this semester, and I was sitting here thinking, you know, how many people have watched every single video this semester when you were supposed to watch it? Um, you know, I'm thinking third period. I know for a fact Kelsey has, and I, I appreciate you so very much, Kelsey. You know, you're just such a great student. And I can I can think of everyone else at that table. I know you've actually copied notes from her. Um, probably tamer fifth period. I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm just thinking about this, and I want you to tell me tomorrow, when you walk in my class, if if you've watched every single video when you were supposed to, and just on your honor, I just want you to let me know tomorrow. Just when you walk into class, say, Mr. G, I have done that. I'm, I'm just curious is all. Um, and man, Brandon, gosh, uh, Army's, I almost had it yesterday. I watched that video. I was rooting for him. I watched that video. Sorry. I watched that game. I was rooting for him. But just too many turnovers. Uh, maybe he's really dominated in the last, like, 14 years. So it was pretty sad. Anyway, Black Knights, maybe next year. So here we go. We're going to talk about arc length today. And I'm going to develop this, and you are responsible for this development on your test. Again, I told you you're responsible for development of the volume um, by disks. Also, maybe showing why the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And here's another thing that you might be responsible for on the test. So here we go. Let's just say that we have... Oh, that's not what I wanted. I want this over here. Let's just say that we've got a curve. And we want to find the length of that curve. For example, if a little bug was on this curve and actually walked along this path, how far would he go? Now, the probably the grossest or the the most wrong distance would be the straight line distance between these two right here. Obviously, this distance along that arc is longer than that distance right there, but heck, it'd at least be a, an approximation. You know, so I've got this distance. I'm, I'm going to go from like A to B, right? And I want to find this distance. One thing we could do is approximate it by that really bad approximation. So we would just do a little Pythagorean theorem action here. I would find this delta x, and I would find this delta y, and I would do the Pythagorean theorem on that. And I would do the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. I would just find that distance. And of course, that would not be a very good approximation. Um, but what I could do, with, what might be better, is if we did broke it up into two pieces. Like, let's say we went from here to here. We picked a point on the curve between A and B. And then we took that distance plus this distance right here. Now, if I added these two together, that would be a better approximation to the distance. So I would do like this first... Um, Pythagorean theorem plus the second Pythagorean theorem. So I would add it up. And then, of course, a better approximation than that would be pick, you know, more baby steps. Go from here to here, then go from here to here, then from here to here, and, you know, and add up more and more. And so, obviously, you might know where I'm going with this. I would want to add up. There's my sigma. And we're going to do our Greek letter sigma. Um, from one to however many times I wanted to do these baby steps of these, these little square roots, delta x sub i squared plus delta y sub i squared. And I would want to add up all of these things. And of course, if I wanted this to be exact, how many times would I have to do this? I would want to have an infinite number of these thingies, right? So I would let the limit as n goes to infinity. Now, is this a Riemann sum? Uh, no, it's not a Riemann sum. It is an infinite uh, limit However, we don't have what? What are we missing out here? We don't have a product. But don't worry, I can fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the limit as n goes to infinity. i equals 1 to n. I'm going to factor out. Um, I'm going to not worry about this sub i stuff here. I'm just going to factor out a delta x squared from all of this. Now, what is that going to give me? Well, that's going to be 1 plus, if you factor a delta x out of that, that's going to be delta y over delta x squared. Boy, that's a really bad parenthesis. I'm so sorry about that. But multiply this back through if you don't believe me, and you see that you get right back to this. Go a little further. Now, I'm going to, the square root of delta x squared is just, well, delta x. So I'm going to have the limit 
as n goes to infinity of i equals 1 to n of the square root of 1 plus delta y over delta x squared and then the square root of delta x squared is just delta x now I do have a Riemann sum wasn't that neat I'm so clever I, I wish I could take credit for this but you know there's several calculus people before me that have, uh, have done this but anyway now it is a Riemann sum it is a product it's an infinite product which means that I don't have to do the long way I can turn this into the definite integral the definite integral and of course we're gonna say that a is less than or equal to all of these little x sub i's is less than or equal to b. So we're going to go from a to b of the square root of 1 plus. Now what does delta y over delta x represent? Slope. Yes, that's correct. This is the rate of change. This is the derivative. And through the limiting process, that becomes dy dx squared and delta x becomes dx. This is your arc length formula. This is what we're going to use to find the length of an arc or the, the distance that something travels along an arc. This is your formula to know. We are going to have to find the derivative of the function then we're going to have to square it and we're going to have to throw it into this little formula and find the integral. So I guess let's do a example or an example We've got y equals the square root of x, and we want to find the length of that curve on the interval from 0 to 4. So let's take a look at the little pretty picture. We're going from 0 out here to 4, and we know that this thing looks something like this. So we want to find the distance that something would travel if they were going to travel along that path. So what's the first thing we need? Let's go back and look at the formula. We need the derivative. Man. It's almost like we're only doing two things in this class, derivatives and integrals. And this one has both of them in this formula. You've got to take a derivative and you also have to integrate. I have to find the derivative of the y equals. I'm going to square it and put it in this formula. So let's see. If y equals the square root of x, that's x to the 1 half power. Of course, we know the derivative is 1 over 2 square roots of x. That's almost worth remembering because we've seen that so much. Now what is, and I guess I'm going to call that dy over dx instead of y prime because that's how I have it notated in my formula, is 1 over 2 square roots of x. So what do we do next? We have to square that. So what is the dy dx squared? Well, it's 1 over 4x. Um, you square the 1, it's 1. You square the 2, it's 4. You square the square root of x, it's x. So here is our formula, and I don't have my calculator out, so I'm just going to set it up. My formula is the integral from 0 to 4, that's not hard, square root of 1 plus 1 over 4x. Now when you guys do this formula, this integrand here is probably not going to be something you can do by hand. So this is almost always going to be a calculator question. And I don't even know which one of these answers it is, and I'm not pulling up my calculator. So you can do this, and it's A, B, C, D, or E. Somebody tell me when you walk into class tomorrow, by the way, what the correct answer was. All right, last thing we're going to do here. Oh, by the way, that's just the formula, and that's an ex example. And um, last thing we're going to do is we're going to find an arc length. Uh, let's do the arc length of a circle. So let's take a look at a circle here, centered here at the origin, going out to some radius. And let's say we wanted to find the distance around this circle. We're going to go from negative r to r. Well, we know that the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And from class, we know that the upper hemisphere of this circle is the square root of r squared minus x squared. That's the upper hemisphere here. So if I wanted to find the arc length of this, I, I think I'm... I'll do this. I'll just find this distance from here to here and I will double it. And that would obviously be the distance around the circle. So what do we need? Well, we, we know our formula, so we need the derivative. So let's find dy dx. Well, dy dx is 1 half times r squared minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. And that's all times negative 2x. Let's clean that up. Those twos go away. So this is negative x over the square root of r squared minus x squared. That's dy dx. 
Now we know from our arc length formula, oh, and by the way, I'm going to double this. Don't forget I'm going to double this. From our arc length formula, we are going to square this. So my length is going to equal 2 times the integral from negative r to r of the square root of 1 plus this squared. So that's going to be x squared over r squared minus x squared. Well, I said earlier you usually can't do these integrals by hand, but let's see if we can do this one. This is going to be the integral from negative r to r. I'm going to make common denominators, and so this is square root of r squared minus x squared over r squared minus x squared plus x squared over r squared minus x squared. So I've got common denominators now, which means that I can bring these together. So this is 2 times the integral from negative r to r. Uh, those x squareds are going to cancel, so I've got the square root of r squared over r squared minus x squared. Now, which one of these is a variable and which one of these is a constant? We know that r is a constant and x is a variable. So I can take the square root of the top and bottom independently, which I'm going to do. So this is 2 times the integral from negative r to r of r, of course the square root of r squared is just r, over square root of r squared minus x squared. And what can this r do? Well, it can come out here which is what I'm going to do next. So this is 2r integral from negative r to r of 1 over the square root of r squared minus x squared. Oh, where is my dx at? My goodness, that's horrible. dx, dx, that's just silly. I better put that on my formula. Let's go back and see if I put it on my formula because if I didn't, then it's just a bad, bad teacher. Man, what is wrong with me? Let's come back here to my formula. I put the dx there. Did I put it all the way back here? Uh -huh. I did. Okay, well, I just decided to fall apart at the very end here then. So here we go. Now, do I know this integral? Well, what does this look like? This is 1 over the square root, and there's a minus. Hey, that's an arc sine integral. That's an arc sine integral where this is pretty simple. U is x, and A is r. So we know this, this antiderivative is arc sine of x r. I'm sorry, u over a, as long as the dx is on top, and we're set because du equals dx here, so this is a nice little arc sine integral. So it's 2r times the arc sine of x over r evaluated from negative r to r. So what do we do? We plug the top number in first. So this is the arc sine, r goes in for x, of r over r minus the arc sine of negative r over r. Well, let's see. The first one is the arc sine. I'm going to switch the notation up there. The arc sine of 1 minus the arc sine of negative 1. Put some parentheses there. Okay, do you know the angle whose sine is 1? Well, of course you do. That's pi over 2. And do you know the angle whose arc sine is negative 1? Of course you do. That's negative pi over 2. And so let's see, those two negatives make a positive, so I get 2r times 1 half pi plus 1 half pi is just pi. <laughs> and looky there. That is the distance around that circle. This is the arc length of a circle with a radius of r better known as the circumference. I wonder where that formula came from. Yay, calculus. I'll see you guys tomorrow.